Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. Today, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to leave you feeling inspired and energized to start your day. I want to talk about the power of being present. We live in a time where smartphones and technology are a huge part of our lives. We are constantly checking our, on our social media, checking our Instagram DMs or emails, or simply scrolling through our social media feeds, checking out what our friends or the celebrities we admire are up to. This can make life very distracting and take our valuable attention away from what's going on in the present moment. We are all guilty of being on our phones, distracted by our emails, texts, social media, when we're at a party or simply meeting a friend for coffee. The truth is being present holds power. It allows us to focus on our relationships, enjoy the moment, and truly live in the now. This is why it's so important to limit your time on social media or your smartphone and instead focus on what's going on in front of you. We can't enjoy life when all of our attention is put on what's going on virtually rather than in the present moment where our attention should be. I'm gonna give you three steps to stay more present and to improve your relationships. Number one, get rid of your device when you're speaking to someone or meeting them. Focus 100% of your attention on them. If someone is giving you their time, listen to them. Be present. Your phone, email, and social media can wait. By simply getting rid of your device during this time, we can then shift our attention to what matters, human interaction. Number two, listen. When you're with someone, listen wholeheartedly. Don't listen only waiting for your turn to talk. Listen to the person who's in front of you. So often we want to be heard, but then lose focus when someone else speaks. Be present and fully give that person your attention by listening to them. And number three, enjoy the present moment. Take in what you see and feel all around you. What colors do you see? What music is playing? Who's around you? Enjoy this very moment because moments become days, days become months, months become years, and before you know it, we only have memories left. So make sure you're making those memories and the time you have in this very moment count. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. I see you on Instagram interviewing Jennifer Lopez to Tom Cruise. Um, what has been one of the highlights in your career so far? I've been fortunate to interview The Rock nine times. Not that I'm yeah. counting. <laughs> what does luxury mean to you? Luxury. In India, I discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf. True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world. And it can be all designed around you. All the beauty is yours. All the music is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. Incredible India. Natural sweetener, flavor all. 20 flavors to choose from. The perfect substitute for sugar and artificial sweeteners. Flavor all by Greenish. Flavor all from Greenish. Now available at Rexall Pharmacies. Joining me now is four time Emmy Award winning TV host Chris Van Vliet. During the span of his career, Chris has interviewed celebrities like Jennifer Lopez, Dwayne Johnson, Tom Cruise, and has gained over 80 million views on his YouTube channel. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show today. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be on. Thank you so much. And I feel like I'm back home in Toronto by being on the show. Right? <laughs> and we've been following each other on Instagram for a while. Um, and I see all of the great things you're doing. So thank you. Let's uh, dive right into it. Let's talk about your career, how you started. Um, was journalism always your passion or was it something you fell into? Uh, it's, it's always been something that I like absolutely loved and was super passionate about. I remember being four years old with a Fisher Price tape recorder and wow. pretending 
be a radio DJ. And that was just my goal. And I, I just had this idea throughout my teenage years and then into university. I went to Wilfrid Laurier University. I had this idea that like, if we're gonna work for the next 40 or 50 years of our lives, why would you ever wanna do something you didn't at least kind of enjoy? So that was my goal. I didn't wanna have a job that I hated for the rest of my life. So I put in the work, internships turned into part-time jobs, which turned into jobs. And now I'm fortunate to be able to do this for a living. Yeah, and as we were talking about, you made that jump. You said you grew up in Pickering, you lived in Toronto and you made that jump to the States. Talk to us about that. Well, it just kinda came to a point where like, if, if I kinda put my career in a nutshell, I was an intern at Chex TV in Peterborough, which turned into a job there. Then I was hosting a show for MTV2 in Vancouver. And then when the Chubb CTV merger happened in 2007, our show unfortunately got canceled. And then I was kind of, I was two and a half years into my career and I was kind of at this crossroads. I'm like, what do I do? I had this amazing dream job and yeah. now I have nothing. So I actually <laughs> had to pack up my car drove all the way from Vancouver back home to move in with my parents in Pickering yeah. and had to decide what I was going to do. And there just weren't a lot of opportunities in Canada. I was, I would be the last, you know, second, second last person picked or like it would be, I would have been the final two or three or four for a job and not get it. And I kind of just yeah. said, if I can't get a job in my own country, I think I got to look elsewhere. And I looked into getting an agent in the U S and many, many, many dozens of interviews and yeah. auditions later and I, I finally got a job in the US and I've been fortunate to be here since and there's just been a ton of opportunities here because I've been willing to work for them. Yeah, and as you said, Toronto and yeah. Canada, there's not that many opportunities. It's very saturated. Um, so it was great that you made that jump. Let's talk about what do you think sets you apart from other people because, you know, this industry is difficult and there's not that many successful people in it. So what do you think made you stand out? I think for me it was that I gave myself no other option. I yeah. wanted this to be my goal. I wanted this to be my job and I wasn't willing to settle for anything less than that. And during my internship at Checks TV, I was working at PJ's Pet Center oh, wow. in the fish department, scooping dead fish just so I could pay oh. for the gas money to drive a hundred kilometers to Peterborough so I could wow. do my internship. So I think the only thing that set me apart is, look, we all have talents and if someone's willing to uh, pursue this business, whether it's radio or television or now YouTube or podcasting, you obviously have some sort of talent. The only thing that set me apart from other people was the fact that I was willing to work for it. Like the job that I had in Vancouver, they didn't want to bring me in for an audition. Yeah. And I called the station, I knew the name of the person that was doing the hiring, and I called like the operator at the station and said, oh, hi, is so-and-so there, please? And mm -hmm. they transferred me to her desk wow. and yeah. said, hey, I'm gonna be in Vancouver next Thursday. I, I know that I don't have an interview for this job, but I'd love to come in and just chat with you about the opportunity. And yeah. they said, well, if, you know, if you're gonna be here, if you're willing to fly five hours, yeah, we'll bring you in to have a chat. and." I came in five minutes later, they offered me the job. And I think that wow. that was the, the thing that set me apart is willing to bet on myself and take those chances. Yeah, I like what you said in the beginning. You said that you didn't give yourself any other options. And I think that's so important in this industry or doing anything that you love is really not giving yourself any other options and kind of just going with it. So, and I can also relate to, you know, when you're passionate about something, you'll do anything to get it. Um, what's been one of the biggest failures you've had and how did you overcome it? Well, I mean, I don't know if it would be really a failure, but I picked up my entire life and moved it out to Vancouver for this job, thinking I was going to be on this job for as long as I could possibly be on that job. And the fact that the show got canceled, it wasn't a failure, but it was a huge setback for me to go, okay, what do I do now? Yeah. And I was unemployed for seven months you know, I moved back in with my parents and collected unemployment insurance and yeah. I think for me it was this moment of going all right is this really what I want and yeah. if it is what's the next step to make this happen and if it isn't I got to figure things out from here and I decided that yes absolutely this is what I wanted to do and yeah. I was going to take all the steps to make this happen and that was such a learning moment for me mm -hmm. because when you don't have a job boy, your days get real boring. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. what did you do today? Uh, I went to the gym. And that's like the end of your day. Yeah, no, I can 
totally relate to that. <laughs> um, now you're obviously doing amazing. You're doing such big things. I see you on Instagram interviewing Jennifer Lopez to Tom Cruise. Um, what has been one of the highlights in your career so far? Well, I, I always had this like bucket list of people that I wanted to interview and I was a yeah. massive wrestling fan growing up and now I'm fortunate to work a little bit in the wrestling industry yes. and <laughs> The Rock was number one on mm -hmm. that list yes. and been fortunate to interview The Rock nine times. Not that I'm yeah. counting or anything. <laughs> yeah, but it's a big deal. He's exactly what you want him to be. He's kind, he's charismatic, he's funny, and he does this interesting thing, like this total celebrity thing where he makes you the focus. Even though he's yeah. the biggest star in the world, he makes sure. you feel special. And uh, that was a really cool moment for me to be able to go, I want to interview The Rock, and here I am now interviewing The Rock. Yeah, I saw that interview and he even complimented one of your questions. He's like, what a great, powerful question he said to you. I know that it was your dream growing up to play pro football. If you could go back, obviously things worked out pretty well for you. It worked out pretty good. <laughs> if you could go back and change anything to make that happen, would you change anything? That's a great question. Look at you, man, oh, with the powerful you. question. <laughs> Which is amazing. Um, Let's talk to also, you said um, you've also interviewed Jennifer Lopez and other people. How has those experiences been like? I mean, I, those people are stars for a reason. And yeah, I think that they come sure. into the moments where it's a, they know the cameras are on and they know that for the most part, they're promoting something, whether it's a movie, an album, a book, a tour, whatever it happens to be. So this, the big stars are the big stars for a reason. They yeah. put that face on, and you know this from all the celebrity yeah. interviews no, you've for done. Sure. <laughs> you know, Tom Cruise's, the Will Smiths, Hugh Jackman, Jennifer Lopez, the biggest stars are the biggest stars for a reason, and they never disappoint. And uh, it's always been so cool walking out of those moments, whether it's a one minute interview on a red carpet or whether it's a sit down for 10 or 20 minutes. You always leave those moments going, that person had a dream, yeah. and now they're yeah. living it, which means that. I can live my dream. Yeah, and you definitely are living your dream. Let's talk about your YouTube channel. I know you have, I think it was 80 million views on YouTube. Talk to us about how that started. It kind of started as an accident, to be wow, honest. really? So my YouTube channel is like nine years old now, and it just started out as, you know when you do these interviews, like oftentimes you're only posting 15 or 20 seconds on yeah. your TV show or on your newscast or whatever. But I was having these five, 10, 15, 20 minute interviews that I really enjoyed. And I'm like, I don't want 95% of this interview to go unseen. So I'm just gonna take the raw video, put it on my YouTube channel. And if a few dozen people see it, cool. At least I was sharing it with somebody. Mm -hmm. And a few of those videos started to gain traction, especially, yeah. you know, like I said, I'm a big wrestling fan. And a couple of those videos really started to gain traction. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of rode that wave. And a yeah. few years ago, I said, look, I've been doing these when it's convenient. I've been doing 15 or 20 of these a year when they kind of come to me. What if I were to start to go to them? What if I were to start mm -hmm. driving a few hours or even flying somewhere? Or if I was somewhere like LA or New York for an interview, what if I stayed an extra night on my dime and was able to get some YouTube content? And that's when it really started to take off. Uh, you yeah. know, I did 100 interviews last year and my goal wow. was 50. And I think this year I've already done, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them. And I think that the biggest thing for me is the phrase that's defined my life and really helped me out is vague goals get vague results, which means specific goals get specific results. And I think too many people go, I want to lose some weight this year. Well, if you lose one pound, you've accomplished your goal. You've lost yeah. some weight. Yeah. So I just saw specific goals. And last year specifically, I said, I want to do 50 interviews this year. And I, I was able to accomplish that goal halfway through the year. I said, all right, well, let's do 100. And that's what yeah. we ended up doing. Yeah. I think what's really cool about you and what makes you stand out is you're very authentic. And you can see that in your interviews. You're always laughing. You're not afraid to you know, crack a joke. Um, have you always been comfortable like that? Or did you grow into it? Well, thank you very much for saying that. And I think the, th the same thing goes for you as well. And that's why you've been so successful. I think for me, it was the biggest thing was I stopped treating them like interviews. Yeah. And I think that we have conversations in our daily life all the time. And I started approaching these interviews, and I'm using air quotes yeah. here, uh, the same way that I would treat like a conversation at a party. If yeah. I ran to that person 
at a party, you wouldn't go, okay, so I'm going to ask this question first and then this question is going to come mm -hmm. after that. You'd listen and you'd be attentive in the conversation. And if they happened to mention something that was interesting, you would absolutely run with it. You wouldn't just be like, okay, and on to this completely unrelated thing. Yeah. And I think that for me, that's been the biggest thing. Also, I've been really fortunate lately with my YouTube interviews and podcast interviews to have longer form conversations. Mm -hmm. As you know, from doing celebrity interviews, it's tough to get a real conversation going yeah. in three or four or five minutes. Yeah. But when you have 45 minutes, an hour plus, you can ease into topics. You can really let some topics breathe. And I think that that's really helped me out a lot too. Yeah, and that's so true about celebrities. You know, they're just regular people that kind of accomplish their goals. And when you treat them regular, not regular, but when you treat them just as a friend, it makes things flow so much easier. I can totally relate to that. Um, Let's talk about some advice. What advice, because you've been successful as a YouTuber. Everyone wants to do that. You've been successful as a TV host. Uh, what advice do you have for people that want to do what you do? I'd say the first step is you just got to take a step. And I think yeah. that too many people go, oh, I'd love to start a YouTube channel. As soon as I buy this camera and this microphone and I build this website, no, just go out and start doing it. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. People get in their own way. So if you are going to have a YouTube channel or podcast, and maybe you're going to transition that into being a TV host uh, later on in your career, just know that you have to take a few steps. And also know that no one is watching your first handful of videos. And I mean that in the <laughs> nicest, kindest way. Yeah. <laughs> that means that you can go out and make those mistakes and you can try things and know that only 17 people are watching because <laughs> when 17,000 people are watching, you aren't making those same mistakes. I mean, yeah. Joe Rogan is incredibly popular and incredibly successful with his podcast. And he's on like episode 1300 and something right now. Yeah. Nobody was watching episode 114. Nobody was watching mm -hmm. episode 231. <laughs> and that's what he was building the audience, making those mistakes, and that's why the show looks the way that it does right now. And definitely. Yeah, I think you definitely have to take small steps and just keep going because, yeah, as, as you said, you know, this is a difficult industry, so you definitely have to just stay focused. Um, what are you up to now? Talk to us about your projects right now. First of all, I didn't notice the glowing CN Tower behind you. I really like that. <laughs> I have to They're represent nice. Toronto <laughs> for the both for of us. <laughs> so my biggest thing now is uh, I, I, most recently people have seen me on All Elite Wrestling. Yes. I was a stage interviewer for their first handful of shows on uh, TNT, which I believe airs on um, TSN in Canada. Um, Our production I, assistant was very excited that you were coming on. He was actually setting up the chair beside me and he's like, is he coming in? And I said, no, he actually he doesn't live here, he lives in the States. He's like, oh, I was actually, <laughs> like he was so disappointed because oh, he's man. a big fan. <laughs> well, next time I'm in Toronto, I'd love to yes, come by, 100%. meet you in person and meet everyone yes. there. Um, I've really put a lot of focus on my YouTube channel and that it, it's funny, when you double down on something that you love and you're passionate about, you really start to reap the rewards. So sure. last month I drove eight hours from where I live to do some interviews in Atlanta. Tomorrow I'm wow. getting in my car and driving four hours and spending the night on my own dime in Chicago. And I think that this is something that needs to be said, like that I think that if you're willing to put in the effort and if you're willing to spend the time on this, it, it's only going to pay off for you. And sure, it might cost you some gas money, it might cost you some hotels, but the payoff is gonna be big because you're willing to do this. And I think that I realized with my YouTube channel that yes, wrestling is a niche, and that's mm -hmm. mostly what my interviews are now, yeah. but also like I was willing to do something that other people weren't willing to yeah. do. I was willing to fly myself, drive myself to do these interviews. And when you're willing to do something that other people won't do, you start to get the things that other people don't get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And speaking of that, what's the best advice someone ever gave you in your career or even like a mantra that you live by? Well, the mantra I live by, I mentioned earlier, is vague goals get vague results. And I think that it's super important in your life to set specific goals. And that's daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, even, you know, for the decade. And I think Bill Gates said it best when he said that we underestimate what we can do in a decade and we overestimate what we can do in a year. Or you can flip that around, probably makes more sense. We overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate yeah. what we can do in 10. Yeah. And I think that's so true. I think that we kind of live in this day-to-day -day life where we go, oh, well, I'm no better 
today than I was yesterday. But if you get just like 1% better every single day, by the end of the year, you're 37 times better than you were at the start of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to focus on those small gains every single day. Yeah. I think that's great advice. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, you're doing it big and it's so great to see someone in from Ontario, Canada doing amazing in the state. So congratulations. Well, thank you. And you as well. And I appreciate thank you me. having me on and I look forward to coming on in person and uh, yes. continue this conversation soon. Yes. All right. You definitely, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Next okay. time you're in okay. Toronto, you got to come back. <laughs> All right. All right. Great. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as through iPhone and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.